And hey guys, this is Opeb. Jump right back into home. Like the guy said, or like the game recommended, I'm gonna try to finish it in one go. I found another dead body, a sewer worker. By the wounds all over his face and body, I figured he'd been stabbed repeatedly. There was a key ring sticking out of the man's pocket. Did I take it? I thought about the knife I had found in some disgust as I carefully picked the keys from his pocket. I was almost worried he was gonna grab me. There was a security camera in the room. There must have been a way to see what had happened. Maybe the VHS tape I found could be useful. I wonder what time period this is where he thinks he can use the VHS on this. I used the key ring to open the door. The shelf full of security tapes was strictly organized, though covered in dust. It looked like the tape I found was the one that was missing from the shelf. There was a dusty VCR on the security desk. I wondered what was on that VHS tape I found. Did I play the tape? Oh no. Video showed a man right there in the sewers being attacked. The tape looked fuzzy and stretched, like somebody tampered with it. Looked like there could have been two men. That's pretty spooky. I could smell a hint of fresh air here. I must have been finally getting out of that strange facility. But I wondered, did that key I found on the sewer worker open anything else? Probably. I don't care. <laughs> The climb was slow, thanks to my sore leg and the extra weight I was carrying. Would I really need that gun or that knife on my journey back? Or had I taken them for some other purpose? The thought of that videotape still gave me chills. Who was it that didn't want to be seen? And what was in that locked room? I shook my head as I reached the top of the ladder and heaved at the latch above me. Suddenly, the awful smell of that sewer gave way to the dank scent of pine trees. Everything smells dank. Dank, dank, dank. Stupid dog. Or something. Hmm. Okay, it's just gonna repeat. I thought I'd only see it once. Get spooked by it. That's a scary noise. <laughs> An old ladder leading up to the ancient watch uh, water tower. The ladder needed to be extended so I could climb it. Did I extend the ladder? I popped the latch and brought the ladder down. In a patch of smeared dirt and grass, there was a beat-up old wallet. I thought it was mine. Did I take it? I slid the filthy wallet in my back pocket. I noticed it didn't contain any kind of gun permit. In fact, it didn't contain any cards or ID of any kind. I thought I should recover my credit card and driver's license at, e at least. From the railing I could see over the woods and down to the entrance to the sewers. Had I come through there before? If I did, someone definitely could have seen me. This guy loves to add little notes to everything he says that would probably freak him out even more. If I was a person in a scary movie or game or something, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I tried the little key I had fished out of the murky puddle in the sewers. It fit and I heaved open the rusty door. The wind was picking up a bit. The night air had become strangely chilly. The old train station was quiet as a tomb. The only sound was that of the increasing wind buffeting the decrepit structure. Two doors. The ancient ticket booth was falling apart and covered in dust and grime. 
Stacks of paper lined the counter, faded remains of old schedules and reports. Among the papers were newer-looking sheets, covered in scribbles and illegible notes. Come to think of it, the man in that house had kept similar scribbles hidden on his bookshelf, and he had notes on the water tower outside, too. I guess he could have been coming here, but why? What was he using this old station for? To spook people. An old map encased in glass hung on the wall. It was the train routes connected to that old station. As I looked at it, it seemed familiar. Of course, the map I found in those tunnels had similar locations marked, and the notes I found on the other man's bookshelf. His notes mentioned the water tower and even this train yard. What was he doing coming back here? The old train was ripped open, and hanging from a shred of metal as well as the broken fence was a. Oh, and hanging from a shred of metal as well as the broken fence was a dark stained patch of cloth. It looked synthetic, like some kind of outerwear. Inside the train's shell, I could see a few faint impacts, like wounds. Could they have been bullet marks? Was somebody shot there? The ground was well worn, though I couldn't really make anything out. I realized I was touching the gun I had found as I thought. That's really not good. This guy's more and more sounding like he's the killer. Or like, I'm the killer. Ooh, pretty spooky. This must have been the entrance to the forest that was mentioned on that map I had seen. Whoever was poking around in those tunnels underneath that man's house had scribbled notes on this place, but I couldn't make them out. Here, the sign pointed out various campsites and walking paths within the woods. It mentioned a river and maybe a washroom, but the rest was too faded to see clearly. River and washroom, river and washroom. Oh. Trampled into the dirt and grass was a plastic card of some kind. I brushed it off and was surprised to see it was my credit card. I wasn't sure if it was still usable, but it was mine. Did I take back my credit card? I pocketed the credit card. Hopefully I could find my driver's license, too. Through the fence I could see a dilapidated outbuilding. I wonder if I could find my way around. There were some personal effects shoved back into the rock. Wait, there was a notebook there too. Did I read it? Inside the cheap dollar store notebook was page after one page of names and lists. None of it made much sense. The newest page contained several names. Heather, Olivia, Ashley, Cheryl, Iris, Daphne, Holly, Rose, Rachel. Rachel? Her name was last on the list and had a mark beside it in blue ink. The names Daphne and Olivia had been crossed out in the same blue ink. Cheryl, Heather, and Rose had also been crossed out, but these marks looked older and more faded. It was a cheap two-person dome tent. Through the screen on the front I could see two sleeping bags, backpacks, and a small cooler. One of the two folding camp chairs was knocked over, and there was beer spilled everywhere. Where did the campers run off to in such a hurry? A few embers still burned within the fire pit. Who was camping here? Was it... Me. I don't know. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, no, no. Hmm. I think that means I should go in. A 
musty wooden plank propped up the stall door. It didn't really seem useful. Did I bother to take it? I wasn't sure why, but I took the plank. The grimy sink had a small patch in it that looked almost clean. I think that was the one I came in. Maybe. The dry old picnic table sat lonely amongst the trees. It had carvings and marks from years of previous campers. As I tried to read some of the names on the marks, I idly thumbed the knife I'd found. If I wanted to, I could have carved something on that table, did I? With a few crude strokes, I etched a simple design into the wood. R plus H. I felt like a teenager defacing that table. The plank I found was long enough to form a crude bridge, but I wasn't sure if it would hold. Did I use it? Two bodies, two young women, were half dug into a ha hasty, shallow grave between the trees. The younger looking one was still face up, her dead eyes gleaming against my flashlight. They deserve better than that. Did I clean up the gravesite? I tried to cover them up a bit more, and I closed the younger woman's eyes. I fashioned a crude marker. I wasn't sure why, but I felt I had to do something. cross back over. I wasn't ready to head back yet. Is that all that's here? I'm missing something. The girls weren't carrying ID, so I couldn't determine their names. I only hoped that whoever had done this had done it quickly. I wonder now if they had a phone or something at their campsite. Maybe I could call for help? I read some of the other names and notes on the table's surface. Rytron, Kivmar, Uncle Phil, Henry and Daniel, David, Jenny. It seemed like the table had seen a lot of use over the years. Or the murderer wanted to kill Uncle Phil. The inside of that tent was suffocating. No, that's all. That's not too much. Olivia, Daphne. By the looks of it, the fire had been extinguished. It just died out over time. So I already. The middle one is where I came in. This way led to that rock. Maybe it was here and I needed to go further. The sign was the same as the first one I'd seen. This must have been the exit to the other side of the woods. I made it through. I had finally found the exit. Once I left, I knew I never wanted to return there. Through the dense trees, I could finally start to see some light. I must have been at the edge of the forest, though I wasn't sure where the path that ended me led. I could almost feel the cryptic notebook in my pocket as I tried to think about what it could mean. And where were the campers who had abandoned their sight? Would I meet them too? Through the path ahead of me was less dense. I still felt guarded and wary. Who knew what was up ahead?
As I stepped through the gate, I suddenly recognized the auto parts factory where I'd worked as a machinist for all those years. The plant had closed almost three years ago now. Times were better then. I thought I could hear a faint rustling behind me. Maybe it was just the wind. Dug into the ground is a cracked old watch. First my wallet and now this. Did I take back my watch? The watch was useless, but I put it on my wrist anyway. I found the body of a security guard, just doing his job, no doubt. His face was covered with blood from some kind of head wound. I wondered, was this flashlight his? Wait, why would the flashlight have been his? Take him all the way to the house or something? Hmm. One of the lockers hung open. Its contents were tossed around like someone had been looking for something. Every part of this plant smelled old and rotted. I noticed the old bulletin board on the wall. The board contained yellow clippings of newspaper cartoons and notices. There were notes to and from the guys that worked here. One of them was to Norman, who was one of the older guys on the line. Wait, how do you know that? You're not supposed to know that. Our old break table. The layer of dust and grime only made seeing this sting more. Hmm, a power panel. Looked like it was shut off. Did I push the switch? The open locker was stuffed with dirty work clothes and old boots. There was a photo of a woman taped to the inside, but it was scratched out and the face is unrecognizable. Hmm, power panel. Push the switch. It was shut tight. There was a rusty looking card slot on the side. Oh, I thought I had a card or something. I guess not. I should have figured it wouldn't turn on the lights, why would it? It wouldn't be spooky anymore if it did. The door had been hastily boarded up. This was Norman's locker. The door was dented like someone punched it. I don't remember him doing that when we worked there. Another panel I hope could give me the, the power back on. Did I push the switch? Yes. A utility shelf crammed with mismatched tools and items. There was a claw hammer on the shelf. Did I take it? As I took the hammer, I noticed it wasn't as dusty as the rest of the tools on the shelf. The locker was a complete mess. Hidden at the bottom though was a magnetic card. Did I take the card? I slipped the key card into my pocket. Another panel. Another push. Oh, oh. There. Just gotta keep pushing stuff, I guess. That's how buttons work. I struck with the hammer. The old wooden boards came apart easily. After I removed the planks, I left the hammer on the floor. This was my locker there in the factory. It stank of booze. There was a picture of Rachel on the inside. It looked like it had been torn up. I thought I had taken that picture home when the factory closed. There was a mess of empty booze bottles. I wonder if that man in the house had something to do with this. He sure had a lot of alcohol at his place. I 
right, guys. Well, this is another 20 minutes, so I think I'll stop here. I hope you enjoyed it, and see you in the next part.